You wait four months for an update to come along and you get two in the same week, giving you no less than four new significant functions to play around with. You've got a new sideways flying uh, safety setting, you've got an improved battery indicator, you've got the digital zoom on video, and of course you have the long-awaited uh, gimbal sensitivity adjustments uh, to help smooth out the video. So an awful lot to get through today, and that is what I am talking about today. Hello, I'm Ian. I play with drones and I've been playing with a Mavic Air 2 today, taking advantage of the new firmware update that uh, came out this week. This is on top of the new uh, Fly App update that came out last week. And I did a quick video when I was in Malta on holiday uh, on the uh, new functions that the Fly App uh, gave you. But the new firmware update that's come out this week has also given us a couple more uh, things to play with. So I'll be going through those in detail today. So of course, if you haven't got the updates yet, uh, very easy to get hold of them. So if the app hasn't updated, whether or not you're on iPhone or Android, go into the uh, App Store and uh, search for the app and see if there's an update available. With regards to the firmware, all you've got to do is uh, switch on the uh, Mavic Air 2 and the remote control, connect the uh, Fly app up, go into the three dots in the top right, scroll to About and scroll down and you've got Check for Updates. Tap that and it'll do a quick little check. And if you do need the update, it'll tell you. All you've got to do is make sure you've got good internet access so that it can download the package and then upload to your, uh, your drone. Make sure you've got full batteries, good internet access, and a good 10 minutes to hang about for it all to happen. There's actually quite a few different uh, improvements uh, according to the DJI specs. But the four I'm focusing on today, as I said, was this new sideways flying safety setting. You've got the battery indicator, which has uh, got a number of useful little uh, uh, tricks up its sleeve as well. You've also got a new digital zoom function on, the, um, on video, and I'll be checking out whether or not that's any good or not, because normally I'm not a great fan of digital zoom but I've um, been playing around with this one and I have to say I'm actually quite impressed with this. And uh, finally, the uh, last thing is what I covered on uh, the video last week in Malta, which is namely the um, gimbal and the yaw rotational sensitivity adjustments. And I'll briefly touch on those again today for you. So the safety assistance setting is one of the new functions that you can play with. And this is designed to protect the Mavic Air 2 when flying sideways, either by the uh, pilot themselves trying to fly sideways or when it's actually got the obstacle avoidance going and it's trying to go round uh, a, uh, an obstacle. So what you can do is um, switch that on. And you see it comes up safety assistance guide, sideways flying switched off. Now, you've got a couple of settings that you can actually play around with. If you go up into the uh, three dots as usual, here you've got the flight assistance and you've got three different obstacle avoidance uh, actions. You can either bypass it, brake or just uh, have it off altogether. Now, uh, bypass is a pretty nice one. It uh, shows up the intelligence of the Mavic Air 2 and it is actually pretty intelligent when it goes around these things. Or you may choose to just have it to brake, which is always going to be the safest option. When you select the bypass option though, you see this new disable sideways flight option come up. And that is literally going to allow you to uh, toggle it on or off as to whether or not you will be able to fly the Mavic Air sideways or not. Now I'll show you exactly what the impact of that setting is now. So let's just quickly take off. Yes, Ted. Right, so first off, I'm going to leave the uh, disable sideways flight option switched on, which is the default value. So here is what happens. Um, if you don't have the safety assistance on, you fly towards a tree. You get the bleeping and eventually it'll stop, which is all well and good. So let's just reverse a bit. Now we'll actually turn the new safety assistance mode on. Fly towards a tree with exactly the same stick input. This time it flies over the tree and carries on. So useful little uh, trick if you like. Me, myself, I always think you should be flying well above trees anyway. Trees are like magnets to drones and um, they're a surefire way to uh, cause you to crash. So um, yeah, I'm flying close to this just to make this video, but my advice, you should be well above trees. Anyway, look, back to the, um, the setting. If we actually 
go down. Now, whilst this uh, safety assistant thing is on, if I try and stick the left stick, as you can see, nothing is happening. So I have got no sideways control over the drone. And to me, that's going to be really annoying. Um, so what you can do is go back up into the settings and uncheck the disabled sideways flight. Now, when you do your right stick, you've got that back again. So this time I'm trying to fly straight at the tree again, kind of giving it a bit of a heads up that it could easily go around the side. And there we go. He does fly around. So I'm never a great fan of these uh, obstacle avoidance systems. Uh, like I said, you should actually be well above obstacles anyway. They are useful to have though. And uh, to me, if you are gonna make use of it, you might want to uh, switch off that uh, disable sideways flying. So you've still got the ability to move the drone left and right. I think you're soon gonna get pretty annoyed if you haven't got that function available to you to be able to literally just move the drone left and right when you want it to. Um, it does seem to work pretty well when it goes around trees. It's either gonna fly over the tree or around the tree. But uh, yeah, like I said, you should be well above them anyway. So that is the new uh, sideways safety assistance setting that uh, is one of the four functions that we've got. Now let's go up and have a little look at the battery indicator. Battery indicator is a fantastic little upgrade because uh, previously you used to have a white writing, tiny little white number inside a white battery symbol at the top of the screen, which is normally the white sky. So you could never really see how much battery you had left. Now you have this lovely colorful little uh, indicator and you actually have a really useful little setting. If you click on the battery setting, the battery indicator itself, you then have uh, three countdowns. The top countdown timer is until your uh, return to home kicks in. And remember, the further you fly away from your takeoff point, the sooner the return to home is going to kick in. It's an intelligent return to home. It's constantly calculating how much battery you've got left versus how far away from the home point you are. So the further you fly away, the sooner it's got to come back because it's got to allow for more battery to make that return uh, distance, uh, that return flight to you. So very, very useful little uh, function there. The second countdown timer is really useful. So uh, if you ignore the return to home, and you shouldn't, um, then the second countdown timer is telling you how long it'll be before the drone goes into a forced landing. Now the forced landing, you can actually temporarily override by lifting the left stick and increase the altitude. So it's useful if you're over water, but uh, really you should not be putting yourself in this position in the first place. But you can only do that for a certain period of time until the drone says, I've had enough, I've got no battery left, and I am gonna land regardless of what you do. And at that point, all you can do is literally watch it descend. And uh, that is where the until battery depleted um, countdown comes in useful as well. Some of you may have seen my um, driving the, mini, uh, the Mavic Mini battery down to zero video I put out a couple of weeks ago. I canceled the return to home and I tried to fly as long as I could. And eventually without warning, it then suddenly started descending into the cornfield and uh, off I went to try and find it again. So this is a really useful addition. You've got the three key time elements that you need to know on uh, any flight you make. But the overriding rule is don't push the battery because that's when things go wrong. That's when you're going to take risks. And that is when you may well lose your drone. So even though you've got this information, make use of it, but don't push it. The third big function that uh, personally I was waiting for the last four months for was the um, new advanced gimbal settings. These allow you to adjust the sensitivity of the uh, gimbal wheel and also the uh, stick when you're uh, basically adjusting the up and down pitch of the camera and the left to right rotation of the drone itself. Now I did a little video on this last week when I was on holiday in Malta. Don't want to go into too much detail on it uh, now, but in a nutshell, you basically again go to the three dots in the top right, go to control, scroll down, and there you now have these advanced gimbal settings. And you've got four sliders for each of the uh, three flight modes, namely uh, normal, sports, and uh, tripod mode. And in a nutshell, the uh, four sliders, basically the pitch speed is how fast the camera is gonna go up and down when you move the little gimbal wheel on the uh, back of the remote. Generally, slower is better. It's gonna be a smoother movement. I'm finding uh, around uh, five to six is fine for me. Uh, obviously, play around with it. The pitch smoothness, is how gently that movement starts and how gently the movement stops. It's like a little buffer, and it basically means that um, if you actually, if I show you what I mean, 
basically if you have it down to zero the moment you let go it stops dead and the moment you start it stops dead now if we slam that right the way up to the max value of 30 this time full lock up start slowly i let go and it comes to a gradual stop so it's a nice little buffer so i actually have that value quite high i have mine set to around 25. the yaw rotation is quite literally how the uh, the drone itself is rotating left to right and just like the uh, the gimbal pitch uh, a lower speed i think is better if you go down to well let's take it up to high to uh, 90. you can see when you move the left stick left to right the uh, the rotation is pretty ugly so you want that quite low uh, again i have mine around 24 25 now it's fast enough you may want it even slower but crucially then the other thing you can do is the your smoothness and again if i jam that right up again when you let go it comes to a gradual stop rather than a, a uh, an immediate stop so again, check out the other video if you want a bit more info on that. But really, these are singularly the, uh, the most important functional upgrade that we got in order to get smoother video with the Mavic Air 2. And then finally, the uh, last thing I want to do is uh, cover this new digital zoom that's been given. Now, to access that, when you go into uh, video mode, you'll see two 4K settings. You've got 4K wide and you've also got 4K zoom. And if you select that, then, as you may have seen on some of the screen grabs I've been doing already, you now have this little digital zoom, which you can literally tap. And uh, it's a bit ugly there. Let's just try that again. So there's your two-time zoom and your one-time zoom. So I was playing around with this function a little bit earlier today when the uh, light was a lot brighter. Uh, it was too hot to be filming. But I was able to uh, have a good play and see exactly how good this new digital zoom actually is. Now, I have to say thank you to one of my subscribers, Wayne, for getting in touch, showing me this pretty nifty little trick. So if you just tap the screen, you get this very sudden uh, change from one time zoom to two time zoom. But if you hold the function button and move the gimbal wheel, then you'll very gradually zoom in and zoom out, which of course is going to give you a much smoother and better result. So how good is the digital zoom? Uh, well, basically, obviously, I'm not a fan of digital zooms normally because um, all they're actually doing is cropping part of the sensor and uh, you're actually losing some of the resolution by uh, digitally zooming in. There's no optical movement of any lens involved. You can see here I was focusing in on a uh, power line pylon in the distance. This was not with any zoom going on. And so this is the standard 4K video. And what I've done is taken a still frame and I've actually drilled right down to it using Photoshop. And you can see when we zoom right in at the top of the, uh, power, uh, the uh, pylon, you start seeing the individual pixels and the actual detail that you're after is breaking down. Now then I switched to two times video. I didn't move the drone. I simply switched to two times video. And again, in Photoshop, I've taken a still of that frame of the video. And when you actually zoom in this time, you can see a far greater bit of detail. And uh, you certainly don't see the pixelization, uh, pixelation even, um, of, the, uh, of the picture. Things get even better if you're filming in 2.7K or, or 1080. You actually get more zoom options when filming with lower resolution. In 4K, you can only use the two time zoom function up to 30 frames per second. But in 2.7K, you can use it up to 60 frames per second. And when you're filming in 1080, you actually get up to four times zoom, again, up to 60 frames per second. Now in these modes, you are gonna get better results using the zoom because you have redundant pixels. And by this, I mean you've got a 4K sensor being used to capture video at a lower resolution. Take a look at this 1080 clip. Again, using a still frame from a video clip filmed without any zoom, you start to lose detail and you can see the pixelation easily when you drill down into the pylon. But when you look at a still taken from the same 1080 clip, but using the four time zoom function, you can then see far better detail with far less pixelation. So at a lower resolution especially, the new zoom is a really useful feature. So what's my take on the digital zoom? Well, use it sparingly. Occasionally it is nice just to be able to zoom in and uh, get a little bit of extra detail without having to do much editing in, uh, in post-production. Um, it's not gonna magic up detail that didn't exist in the first place, but it is better. You do get a better result, I think, than if you were to just crop 
in, uh, in, in post-production. So um, use it with care, don't use it all the time because if you are basically uh, flying around with a two times zoom on, overall your video is not going to be as good a quality as a, a full size 4K video. So there you go, look, a very quick walkthrough of four what I believe to be very useful new functions. Uh, the sideways flying, yeah, okay, you know, uh, like I said, be uh, well above obstacles and you shouldn't need that in the first place. The new battery indicator I think is a fantastic improvement and you're really going to be able to uh, make good use of that. Don't forget to tap it and then tap it again to show the, uh, uh, the additional countdown timers and then hide it again. The uh, advanced gimbal adjustment, everyone knows how much I've been uh, clamoring for that. So uh, absolutely fantastic addition to the settings and um, the uh, yaw and the pitch adjustments are going to be the two single things that are going to make your video that much smoother. So I really urge you play around with those settings, see what works for you, and uh, you will find they're a huge, huge benefit. And then the digital zoom, as I said, uh, you, you can argue the toss be, uh, either way on this, but I do think it's actually not a bad, uh, it's not a bad tool. Not as good as uh, an optical zoom, obviously, but it is better than just cropping in post-production. So look, there you go. Uh, that's all I've got to say today. As ever, if you like this sort of stuff, give me a little thumbs up, always helps the cause. And I'm sure most of you by now have hit that sub. Ding the dong, get notified each time I put something out. Either way, in this balmy weather that UK is having at the moment, stay safe and sane, have fun and happy flying.